Your career as a software engineer is measurable and the level that you are at right now pretty much determines everything about your life. How much you make, how hard you have to work and whether you control your own destiny instead of being controlled by someone else's. There's actually seven levels of software engineers and knowing where you are right now is critical if you want to climb higher. Each level requires entirely different skill sets, sacrifices, and opens up entirely different opportunities for you as a software engineer. So where are you right now? Let's find out. Level one is the student slash the beginner and you'll stay at this level for around zero to 12 months. The compensation for this level is usually about zero to $10,000 a year, depending on if you have any small side projects or any gigs and you obviously don't need any experience. Some of you will probably go into debt at this specific level. And this is where it really starts for almost everybody. And it is not glamorous. It's not Silicon Valley. It's not how it's portrayed in the movies. It's you at pretty much 11.47 p.m. with 19 Chrome tabs open, watching a tutorial at 1.75x speed, pausing every 14 seconds because your screen doesn't match the tutorial that you're watching. You can build small things when somebody tells you exactly what to do, but if you have to start from blank, your brain usually turns off. Your typical day looks something like this. You watch a tutorial, you copy it, you get an error, you Google the error or ask AI about it, then you copy the solution, then you get a different error and you question why doesn't this work? And this is why at this specific level, you most likely feel overwhelmed because everybody online makes it sound easy and it seems like they have it figured out. You compare yourself to all the cracked devs that you see on X. You fear that you might not be built for this and the job market feels like a literal moving target and you have a pea shooter. So in level one, you are trading speed for growth. Your priority is to learn. If you are in level one and you wanna get ahead of the rest of the devs at this specific level, you've got to stop focusing on tutorials and you have to instead pick one project and fight through discomfort of completing it. Because the key for actually reaching level two is to stop learning and actually ship one ugly project end to end. And once you can ship something, the next level is learning to ship it in the real world. And that's where level two comes in, the intern. Now, the timeline for this is normally zero to one years of real world experience. And your compensation is pretty much internship slash co-op money anywhere from $40 to $110,000 if you're doing an Amazon internship. And for this level, you'll have to be able to follow a specific code base, take feedback, and now to drown in all the information. And this is where you realize all the school projects were pretty much fake. Nothing you have learned in school is being applicable to what you're doing right now. Because right now, you are not building in a clean little sandbox. You are now for the first time stepping into a code base that looks like it was written by five different people with five different philosophies across five different years during five different emergencies because it most likely was. Now, your work is small, but the environment that you're playing in is massive. And here is what your day-to-day -day pretty much looks like. At 9.30 a.m. in the morning, you have a stand-up meeting. You say, yep, I'm still working on it, even though you're not sure what it is exactly you're doing. At 10, 10 a.m., you open up the repo and immediately feel your stomach drop. At 11.40 a.m., you ask a question in Slack, then stare at it for three minutes before hitting send. At 1 p.m., you get your first PR review comment that says, why did you do it this way? At 4.30 p.m., you finally get some tests passing. And at 5.45 p.m., the CI fails because of a lint rule that you didn't even know existed. And by the time 6.20 p.m. comes along, you fix it and realize that you didn't understand the system. You simply just made it work. And this entire time throughout the day, you are trying to look calm. But internally, you're thinking, am I supposed to understand all of this? Is there going to be a time when I'll be able to make sense of it? The main trade-off in level two is your comfort for growth. You get paid now, but your ego gets punched daily and you're terrified of looking clueless, but you constantly 
are. And if you want to be in the top 1% of interns, you've got to simply ask questions, like a lot of them, because the key to reaching level three is becoming coachable and reliable. Level three is the implementer, or as you might know it, the junior developer. I remember when I was a junior. This is essentially the ticket taking mode. You'll be a junior for roughly about zero to two years full time, and you'll be making an entry level salary of about 80 to $140,000 a year, at least based in the US. And the experience that you'll need is that you should be able to ship tickets with clear instructions. At this level, you can deliver as long as somebody else defines the problem for you. You basically live inside Jura and your day looks like something like this. You grab the ticket, you implement it, you fix any lints and the tests fail, then you review the comments, then you merge and the cycle continues to repeat. The truth is that most developers at this level feel extremely anxious about layoffs and AI because you don't feel essential. You know deep down that you are in fact replaceable. The key to reaching level four from level three is to stop just being a ticket taker and instead it's all about becoming a problem closer. When you get a ticket, you don't just ask, okay, what do I code? You ask, what does success look like for this? What breaks if we ship this wrong? Who is impacted by this? And why did this ticket become a ticket in the first place? And what are our edge cases? What are our failure modes? Because once you can actually close problems without handholding from a senior or a manager, you become dangerous but in a very interesting way. Because then you get to level four, the independent builder or the mid-level software engineer. The timeline for this is roughly from two to five years and your compensation is relatively solid, some might even say stable. In the US, the typical money range would be from 120 to $200,000 base. And in terms of the experience required, well, you need to be able to take something vague and actually ship it. So this is where you can finally own a feature end to end. You can go from, okay, we need a thing to, okay, the thing exists in production without needing a senior to rescue you every 45 minutes. You will start off your day in a planning meeting and the PM says something vague like, okay, we want onboarding to feel smoother. Then you proceed to ask the annoying but necessary questions. Okay, smoother how? less steps, higher activation, what specific metric are we tracking? You get the answer, then you write the plan. Not a 40 page document, but an actual real plan that's easy to follow. You then build the feature, something ends up breaking that shouldn't break, and you don't panic, you sit down and you debug and you understand what exactly happened. You fix it and then you ship it. And you don't just ship, you actually monitor, you verify, and you clean up anything that's left over. And you finally get that internal feeling of, okay, I can actually do this. I am meant for this. But then the panic changes. Because the reality of this level is that you realize, okay, if I stay here, I might actually do this for the next 20 years day in, day out without anything changing. And you realize that you want more freedom, but you don't quite know the path to get there. So you start asking, okay, is the ceiling really just all about job hopping? Is that the next best thing? Because here as a mid-level, I'm gonna be stuck in this company. Because mid-level is where the pay becomes decent enough where you're comfortable, but the meaning of the job starts to drain. And the trade-off at this level is novelty for competence. You're finally good, at least a little bit at what you do, but the work can start feeling repetitive and it doesn't have too much meaning. Now, for you to get to the next level, to get to level five, we have to shift from features to specifically systems. And you need to start caring about reliability, performance, maintainability, and cost, because that's exactly what seniors are actually paid for. And speaking of seniors, that's when we get to level five, the system architect slash the senior software 
engineer. The timeline for a senior developer is about five to 10 years. The compensation is high. The typical money range in the US will go anywhere from 160,000 to 280,000 in base compensation often even higher in big tech firms. And the experience required of you is to be able to design systems, anticipate edge cases, and reduce risk overall. And understand that senior isn't about more code. Senior is all about judgment. You become the person that people call when the service is down, latency is spiking, the release is risky, and a decision today will cost, let's say, millions six months from now. And here's what your day typically looks like. At 9.05 a.m., you're in a design review and asking what happens when this scales 10x. At 11.30 a.m., you get pulled into an incident thread, incident thread titled payments failing for 3% of users. At 11.31 a.m., your brain pretty much goes cold and calm and you start a triage. You don't just necessarily fix the symptom, you start tracing the root cause of any problem that you see. Then you ship a mitigation. You then write down essentially the post-mortem of what exactly happened. You then build guardrails so it never happens again. And you stop being evaluated on output and you start being evaluated on consequences. But this level is where a lot of engineers actually feel stuck because you paid well, but you're not completely free. Your calendar still owns you and you're underwhelmed creatively. You realize that more senior doesn't automatically mean more freedom. You can still make decent enough money, but you feel trapped because the trap isn't necessarily the salary, but rather it's the life where your time isn't actually yours. And if that's you, a level five software engineer, then you need to join Code2CEO, the number one startup accelerator for software engineers at this level looking to own their time and freedom. We help you find a business idea, execute it, get your first client, and achieve financial freedom. It will be the first link in the description below. Now, moving on from that, at this specific level, you trade essentially just build for actual responsibility. And the key to reach the next level, level six, well, you need to stop just solving technical problems and you need to start solving alignment problems because above senior, the game is all about influence. And this is where you actually cross into a level that most software engineers never reach, but not because it's harder technically, but because it's a completely different game in and of itself. So level six is all about the multiplier, the staff slash principal software engineer. The timeline to get here is about eight to 15 years, sometimes even more. Your compensation is very high. Typical money range in the US will be from 200,000 to $400,000, if not more total compensation. It really varies. You can even get too close to a million, if not more in certain big tech companies. And the experience required of you is to essentially be able to create a direction and leverage across teams. And this is where you stop being measured by what you build and you start being measured by what you enable. So here's what that looks like when it comes to your day to day. Your calendar is stacked, but it's not because you're quote unquote busy, but because your job is to reduce confusion. You are in meetings all day where nobody is talking about code. Everybody is talking about priorities, trade-offs, timelines, risk management, and revenue. You write an RFC that changes how three teams build things. You mentor senior developers directly under your tutelage, and you kill bad ideas early so they don't grow into something catastrophic. You set standards that prevent outages that you will never get credit for. And here's the part that nobody tells you. This level can feel like you ship less but you carry a lot more weight. The reality that most developers face at this level, at level six, is what's called the golden handcuffs. Because at this level, you're essentially building the engine, but you still don't quite own the car. So then how do you get to level seven? Well, the key to reach level seven is you need to skill that most engineers avoid like the plague, distribution and sales. Because if you can build and you can sell, you literally do not need permission from anybody anymore. And that is the final level, the one that turns software from a simple job into actual leverage. So level seven is all about being the owner slash the creator. 
it's the founder. As for the timeline, that's the beauty of it. It's variable. The compensation is uncapped. Typical money range, you have all the way from negative to people losing money to millions, if not billions of dollars. And the experience required? Well, it's all about building outcomes and leading people. And this is where you stop thinking like an employee and you start thinking like a technical CEO because you don't get paid for writing code anymore. You get paid for solving painful problems and you get paid for outcomes, specifically outcomes that impact revenue, retention, cost reduction, speed, growth, and a plethora of other metrics. And here's what your day looks like. At 9 a.m., you have a customer call. It's not about feature requests, but rather it's about real actual pain. 10.30 a.m., you rewrite the positioning for your company because the market didn't quite understand your last message. By noon, you ship or somebody from your team ships the fix that removes the customer pain from earlier in the day. By 2 p.m., you have a sales call. You're not necessarily begging, you're diagnosing, or you have somebody else on your team in charge of that sales call. By 4 p.m., you document the exact process so you can hire it out and you build out one of your first SOPs. By 6 p.m., you look at the numbers, not necessarily the GitHub commits, but rather the actual business numbers. And AI becomes what it should have always been. Not necessarily a replacement for you, but a workforce that you direct. The trade-off at this level is that you trade certainty of a guaranteed paycheck for control. There's no more guaranteed paycheck, but at least you finally own all the upside and you are not trading your time for money anymore. A paycheck rewards output and ownership rewards leverage. So at whatever level you are, the path forward requires three specific things that every single software engineer needs to do. You need to build skills that compound. So not about learning more frameworks, but rather you need better judgment, communication and systems thinking. You need to build relationship capital because opportunities come through other people, be it teams, mentors, any future partners, or potentially even future clients. And last but not least, you need to understand that each level requires different strengths. Being a great junior developer doesn't automatically make you a great senior. And being a great senior developer doesn't automatically make you a great founder. And if you're a mid to senior level engineer watching this right now thinking, okay, but I don't wanna climb all the way to staff. I actually want to own my own time right as of this moment. Then that's exactly why code to ceo exists because the shortcut isn't about learning more lead code or trying to job hop into the next level it is all about learning how to actually turn your existing software engineering skills into a business that prints leverage and gives you the time and location and money freedom that you deserve so click the first link in the description below and book a call directly with me as always thank you so much for watching and have a good one